Good morning, grade eight. Welcome to today's class. So happy to see that most of you are here. Very strange not to see Lissedi though. Um, okay, um, so I've heard that the school's open for some of the kids again, uh, grade eight. I'm not sure are you back already, some of you or not. Um, however, if you are not, I hope to see you here for quite some time longer. Um, today, very important lesson. So it's actually part of a, um, a whole um I don't know what you call that in, in English, um, that we're going to start uh, with since leer, for instance, that's the Afrikaans word for it. So we're going to talk about different types of sentences and later on we'll also do direct and indirect speech and leidend and bedrijven. So this is just the beginning of this. So it's very important for you to, to listen and to make sure that you do understand what we are um, what we are learning here in, in this in this regard as especially okay guys take photos and let's start so uh, first of all in this lesson we're going to focus on tight forma of tights forma we're going to focus on verlede tight to come in the tight in woordige tight and then later on on kenning and um, which is very important benjamin franklin said tell me and i forget teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. Very important guys. And that's also why I say, well, while we're in this class, please don't hesitate to participate in something. Maybe you can teach us something or maybe um, I, I'm able to teach you something and you perhaps don't have a question or two. All right, so um, as I said, we, we focus on taste forma and here we go. So first of all guys, um, in any language, it can go, um, we can divide times in, um, oh, I've just finished my homework and there was tenses. Okay, great. <laughs> so three three time spaces. So we have verlede tijd, to komende tijd en teenwoordige tijd, which is then past tense, future tense and present tense. And in Afrikaans, um, it's very important to know when to use the right verbs in what regard? Sorry, I just yawned. That is terrible. Okay, so the verlede tijds vorm wordt gewoonlik gevormd dier die hulpwerk word weet. So whenever you see the verlede tijd or then the past tense in Afrikaans, you will see the word het in the sentence. And usually when there's the, the, uh, the word het in the sentence, the main verb will have a G-E-G klank voor aan die verb, in front of the verb. And the verlede tijd refers to something that already took place, that already happened. And here is an example. Die man het die bal geskop. Do you see there? The um, werkwoord het followed by the verb with the ge um, sound in it. Um, and guys, listen here. There is also an exception, an uitsondering. Woorde wat begin met a B-E, a her, a E-R, a ont, a ver, a weer, in onder, so whenever you see a verb that starts with one of those voorvoegsels um, there, then you know it's not getting a ge. Important, please make sure that you remember that. And in the verlede tijd, there is four, um, four ways uh, in which the werkwoord might change. Now, in a gewone werkwoord, um, then the word het comes after the onderwerp werkwoord en dan die ge aan die einde van die sin. Bijvoorbeeld, ek lees die boek, do you see there? That's the present tense, ek het die boek gelees. Do you see there? Um, die boek is then the, the, um, the subject, ek het, ek is die, is die um, onderwerp en dan die boek voorwerp gelees. Do you see that after the um, the um, the subject, the verb head comes, followed by the sub, uh, the object, followed by the verb with the GE in front of it. So that's just the normal um, use of verbs when we have a normal sentence in the verlede tijd. However, when there's a koppel werk woord, um, you remember that's the, the connection verb, um, and you, you will get that um, word such as is, then is will become was and gewees on the end of the sin optional. Okay, so in other words, guys, whenever you see the, the couple work word is in a, in a sentence and you're going to make it for later tight, then it's going to change to was of gewees. Bijvoorbeeld, ek is siek, is the present tense, ek was siek gewees. Do you see there what's going to happen? The verb still stays gewees. 
Then, met a hulpwerkwoord verander die verlede tijdsvorm. So, if there is a hulpwerkwoord, then, um, um, then this is what's going to happen. Present tense, ek sal sien, then it's going to be ek so sien. You see, sal becomes, um, so, ek kan sien becomes Kon. Ek mag sien becomes mog. Look at that interesting spelling there. It's actually an old, very, very old um, Netherlands form. Uh, remember, Afrikaans originate from the Netherlands language. Moet becomes moes. Wil becomes wo. Please, please, please pay attention to this. Also very important. And then, the modale werkwoord. This is actually something that you only learned later on. But see the word het hier, na die onderwerk, oorspronkelijk het, word gehad, en skryf na die einde van die sin. So if you see the, the werkwoord het, and it comes after the subject, um, then the oorspronkelijke het word gehad. Okay, so that's just important, but, but please do not focus so much on this one now. Um, however, you'll see some examples later in the PowerPoint of that. Okay, any questions with regards to verlede tijd? Please ask, no problem. If you've got no questions, you're more than welcome just to say yes, ma'am, and we can go on. If you've got questions, you know that's always important to read the slide afterwards so that you can see if there's something that you might have missed. Kent Lanla, you say yes, man, so you're fine. I like saying your name, Tlanla. Cool name. Okay, so let's quickly then go on with this. So I see, yes, ma'am, let's go on. All right, guys. So now we, after we focused on um, the verlede tijd, we're going to focus on the toekomende tijd. Now, toekomende tijd, um, gomomelu, wait, what did I miss? Okay, guys, um, I'm quickly going back to verlede tijd. Please focus and take a picture of this. And then as, as the list go on and there's maybe a one-minute break or so, go through the slide. Maybe that, uh, there is something that you... Um, that you didn't understand quite well, but we are going to do an exercise, but it's on umkening. So don't worry. Okay, I'm going on. To come in the date, then refers to future tense. Now I've put it in a resource there for you. And um, this is a resource specifically aimed at a child um, or a person who's, who's studying um, Afrikaans as an additional language. So they explain it to you also like I try to do English Afrikaans, English Afrikaans, but it's literally written in English um, as well. So please go, I think Q, um, Q, QR Learn is actually, they've got quite a few Afrikaans topics um, that they can actually teach you as well. So please go to that website. Very, very cool. I enjoy um, getting some of my notes from there as well. Okay, so to come in the tide verwijs na iets wat nog kom. So it refers to something that will still come. And the word sal word gebruik. For instance, die meisie sal presteer. The girl will, oh look at that typo again. Guys, sorry if I fix it, but I cannot stand it if that happens. And it's because I type like a machine. I always type very fast. Okay, die meisie sal presteer. So the girl will achieve. Let op. A gewone werkwoord, that is a normal um, verb, um, na die onderwerp. So, look here, die meisie is the onderwerp of the sentence, is the subject, then comes the normal verb. And listen here, sal na onderwerp werkwoord aan die einde van die sin. So, if the sentence change, um, then this is how it's going to look. Present tense, ek lees die boek, ek sal die boek lees. See here, ek is toch steeds die, die subject, sal sal my gesegde wees. So it's just a normal way of talking about the future. However, now I get a sentence with the, uh, with the, with the koppel werkwoord sal, na die onderwerp. So if it is sal and then after that is the onderwerp, is word wees, then the word is is going to become wees. Bevoorbeeld, and it's going to skyf na die einde van die sin. So in English, the word sal, after the onderwerp, that's one of them. 
is, word wees, the word is, uh, word wees, ek kan nou nie vir jou sê wat het in Engels is nie, en skuif na die einde van die sin. So die woord is, word wees, en hy gaan na die einde van die sin wees. Look at this sentence, ek is siek. Now that is a normal, gewone werkwoord sentence. Do you see there? After the subject is the werkwoord. And what happens? Ek sal siek wees in die toekomst. Do you see, after the subject, the word sal comes, then that is, that was there, becomes wees. Ek sal siek wees. Do you see there? Can I just have an indication if you all saw this change here? Ma'am, we can hear you breathe so clearly. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, guys. I'm very glad to say that I don't have breathing problems then. <laughs> Do you hear that? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, then we get to a hulpwerkwoord. Now, if there is a hulpwerkwoord, sal, na die onderwerp. So, again, sal, na die onderwerp. The, the word sal, after the subject. Die hulpwerkwoord, net voor die werkwoord, aan die einde van die sin. Guys, look here. Ek kan sien, Ek sal kan sien. Look here. Um, sal na die onderwerp, hulpwerkwoord net voor die werkwoord. So die hulpwerkwoord is the word kan. And the main verb is the word sien. So look what's happening here. Subject, hulpwerkwoord, ach, not, 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 the word sal, which refers to the toekomende tyd, hulpwerkwoord, main verb. Now look here. Ek mag sien. Ek sal mag sien, ek moet sien, ek sal moet sien, ek wil sien, ek sal wil sien. Do you understand that whole work word, guys? Just as I always say to you from the very beginning of our classes, and this is something that you must listen to. Language is something you must study, 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 till you understand it. Especially if the verb, uh, or not the verb, especially if the language is not your first language. Okay, that's why I refer you to websites like that, because they explain it to you in a, in a tongue that you understand. Now, if I've got a modale werkwoord in the toekomende tijd, sal, which is then after the onderwerp as well, so oorspronkelijke woord word het, word he, en skuif na die einde van die sin. Bijvoorbeeld, ek het a boek. Then look at this, ek sal, sal, referring to the future, then the object, hey, ek sal a boek, hey. Please take a picture of this, guys. Important and ask if there's something that you don't understand. Please, guys. Okay, children, let's see. Lissetti said she's done. Um, okay, so are we all good? Yes, I'm sure we are. Please stop if, if you're not. So we've done for lede tijd. We've done now to come in the tijd. Now we are going to do teenwoordige tijd. Guys, and there's nothing, I'm not going to say special because that's horrible to say there's nothing special about something in language. There's always something special. But there's not a lot to remember here. Helen has her hand up. Oh, okay. Thank you, guys. I'm I'm really I'm, I'm like a machine sometimes, so I just want to go on. Let me hear, Helen. Um, please, if you've got a question, just quickly ask. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Uh, if I see sorry mistakes, I I, I presume that you are fine. Okay. Look at this video. I've put in a link here to for a video on YouTube, explaining the woordige tijd a bit more. Um, it's referring to, to the heidige tijd, the here and the now. Let me actually put that in there. I prefer putting that in there. Uh, here and the now. So it refers to something that is absolutely happening at this very moment. Like, ons is now in the class. We are in the class now. Um, for example, well, you also know now it's present tense. For example, I sit up the stool. I'm sitting on the chair. The here and the now. Take a picture. I 
Are you done? Where's my chat box now? Guys, I think I'm getting old with this technology. I'm telling you. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 We're done. Okay. So I don't think I put in. Oh, this is the activity. Now we all work together. All of you, listen to me carefully. So I want you to identify the dates for him in the following sentences. Jan het die bal oor die meer gegooi. What tense is this? Verlede, teenwoordig of toekomend? Look at the clues. Het, ge. Look how the sentence is constructed. The main verb at the end of the sentence. Tlanla, you correct for later tides for him. Koos gaan vanavond a wetloop haarkloop. Is it teenwoordig? Future, for later, that can also be a sal. Koos gaan vanavond a wetloop haarkloop. It should actually be koos sal vanavond a wetloop haarkloop. Guys, this is easy. Okay, so this refers to to community. Thank you so much, Setsa. Now, Josie is bezig om huiswerk te doen. Josie is bezig om huiswerk te doen. Is it referring to the past, the future, or the present? Teenwoordig, toekomend, of verlede. Josie is bezig. Thank you so much, Bochum Klanla. Teenwoordig, Schedel. Teenwoordig, well done. There you go. Guys, you're actually very good at this. Schrijf die volgende sin in die verlede tijdsvorm. So I'm giving you a sentence and I'm asking you to write it in the past tense. Koos gaan vanavond a wetloop haarkloop. So this is written in the present tense. Write this sentence in die verlede tijd for me. Please remember in, in this class and I hope hopefully in your other classes as well. If the spelling is on the screen, please try and write the spelling correctly in your in the chat box. Um, but for now, in my, uh, what I want to see is that you understand verlede, verlede tijdsvorm. So please write this sentence in the past tense in Afrikaans. Um, okay, so let's let's try. Koos het vanavond a wetloop Hardloop gegaan. Okay, and Tlanla, so um, you've really tried then. You're almost there. You're almost there. The sentence will be, Koos het vanavond a wetloop gehardloop. You, so you remembered the het, which is good. You must have just remembered with gehardloop the, the GE there, gegaan. So almost there. Koos het vandag a wetloop gehardloop. Gegaan, please. Koos het vanavond a wetloop gehardloop. Okay, guys. You're really trying, and, I, and I'm very impressed um, that you all remember the word hate and the GE. Well done. Schrijf die volgende sin in die teenwoordige tijd. So you must write this sentence in the present tense. Anne-Marie sal in die woud um, stap. Anne-Marie sal in die woud stap. Write that sentence in the present tense, like it's happening now. Teenwoordige tijd. Okay, so the answer there, Anne-Marie stop in the vote. Okay, te bogo, Anne-Marie in the vote gestap. That is, that's a very, that is, would be the answer, exact answer in the um, verlede tijd. So te bogo, if this sentence was, uh, has to be written in verlede tijd, you would have had it absolutely correct. Um, Tlandla and Lissedi, Anne-Marie stop in the vote, correct. Good. Last one. Schrijf die volgende sin in die toekomende tijd. Future tense. Remember the word sal. Jan het die bal oor die meer gegooi. Write this sentence in the future tense. To comment. Te bogoen, klandla, lesedi. 
Ja, baie, baie goed. Jan sal die bal oor die meer gooi. Cheryl, good. You guys, you rock. Very impressed. Well done. Okay. Any questions on tijdsvormen? Any questions on tijdsvormen? And thank you guys. I see that you spelled everything correctly according to the screen. Well done. All right. Let's go on to the next part. Very important part. This is something that children really struggle with. But if you actually get the key stuff, key stuff correct, then you will see that it's not that difficult. So let's look at onkenning. So guys, I've got this amazing PowerPoint um, from the internet. I'm not sure who, uh, who actually made this. Um, the, um, it, it actually uh, doesn't show anything, uh, the name of the, of the person. But I decided to use it, and hopefully, if somebody ever sees this and they maybe know, maybe it's one of your teachers, I would like to reference them. So, if you look um, on this website, also um, Q QR Learn, negative form on Kenning, they explain it to you written in English again. And then, as I said here, this is an anonymous, brown, um, anonymous person who, who made this, and I used it exactly like this. Um, and here's a few stuff that you should know about onkenning. So onkenning is, is um, and the direct translation in, in Afrikaans would be denying something. So onkenning is just like Nklandla said here, the negative form. I write the sentence into the negative form. So look here, ontouri dubbele nie in Afrikaans. So in Afrikaans, we usually use a double nie. This nie die geval in Engels nie. In English, when you write in the negative form, you don't use a double no, um, or I don't know, uh, of a double knee. You only use one. But there's also exceptions, uitsondering. Sinne wat net besaan uit een onderwerp en een werkwoord, met miskien een voornaamwoord daarbij. So, sentences that only has a subject, then a verb, and maybe a um, pronoun, will not have a double knee. Like for instance, hij speel, hij speel nie. Do you see? It's a voornaam word and a verb sentence. Then it only gets one nie. Ek sien hom. Voornaam word, sien verb, hom would be my subject, ek sien hom nie. Very important. Number two, please make a note. Very, very important. Okay, then number three, die positie van die nie. As daar net een nie is, staan dit altyd aan die einde van die sin. Look again at number two, if there's only one nie in the sentence, then it's always going to be at the end of the sentence. As daar twee of meer is, staan die eerste een altyd voor die woord wat ontken word, en die ander een aan die einde van die sin. So, in English, if there is more than one knee, sorry, that was my dog. Um, if there's two knees in the sentence, then the one knee will always stand in front of the word that is being denied or made negative. And then the last one at the end of the sentence. Look here. Pa het sy nieuwe visstok nie gister verloor nie. Do you see then? It's denied that the father um, lost his... Um, lost his um, Fistok. Look there. Nee, and then the last one at the end. Maar twee dag gelede. Do you see this? Please take a picture. Lissetti, no, the dog was barking right next to me. Um, and I've got a baby on my on my lap, and the and the baby almost cried. <laughs> but he's learning Afrikaans now as well. Okay, Khumum Lemu says that he's done. This is a very, very important slide, guys. Each and every one of these slides is something you're gonna have to. Um, make sure that you make, make, take a picture. All right. Can I go on? Let's just ask, do you have questions on this? Any questions? <laughs> Lissetti, I'm sure he's going to be smart as well. Okay. Are you all with me? And yes, you are hearing a rattle. <laughs> 
Okay, let's go on. Okay, now, what is the verschil tussen die volgende? So here, this person went and they wrote um, the Afrikaans sentence and the English sentence. Pa het nie sy vis tot gister in die park verloor nie. He did not lose it. He still has the fishing rod. Do you see here? The difference is he didn't lose it. And the explanation is he still um, does have his, his fishing rod. Pa het sy vis tot nie gister in die park verloor nie. He lost it on another day, but it is lost. You see here. Pa het sy vis tot nie gister verloor nie. So he didn't lose it yesterday, but he did lose it at some other stage. The first one. Hy het nie sy vis tot gister verloor nie. So he didn't lose it. Here, he did lose it, but only on another day. And then, pa het sy vis tok gister nie in die park verloor nie. He lost it elsewhere, not in the park. So he did lose it, but not in the park. Pa het sy vis tok gister in die park nie verloor nie. So um, he did not lose it, it might have been stolen. So he didn't lose it, nee, hy dit nie verloor nie. Maar is dalk gesteel, of hy dit, um, of, of um, hy dit gebreek, of so ietsie. All right. Do you see um, the differences there? Okay. Okay. Take a picture, guys. Okay, Cheryl says she's done. Right, then we're talking here about the position of the negative form in the sentence. As we said, soos reeds gesê, die negatief kan, st kan staan waar jy die sin negatief wil maak. So the negative form, the D, will stand in the sentence where you want to make the sentence negative. But normaal werk sal die eerste negative net na die eerste werk verstaan. Normally, the first knee will stand um, after or, or um, after the first verb. In the tweede negative, hier last in die sin. This is actually explaining it very well. So if you want to remember this, the first knee will stand after the first verb and the last knee will stand at the back. Take a picture of this because if we exercise later on, then you can remember this. Then they give us an example. Now, you guys remember last week we did Stompy. Now, Stompy is amazing. And you can see the, the example here. The young man, subject. Het nie. You see there, that's the negative, the first one. A week geleerde die bal hard in die klas geskop om die onderwijzer kwaad te maak nie. First nie, in front of the, of the, um, of, um, of behind the verb, excuse me, there is the verb het. So the first knee behind the first um, verb, and then the last knee at the back. Do you see? And if you know that, according to Stompy, guys, then this will be very easy for you. Any questions on this one? Okay. Have you taken a picture, guys? Okay. All right. Can we go on? Because I asked if you've got a question. Oh, well, you said no. Okay. No, the volgende in. Who on the in the unkennende forum to do? So, guys, this is also, we know I want to give an order in the negative form. Then this is going to happen. But please, now you must um, listen how some of the words are going to change. This person is saying, Mark the dear to close the door. If I want to write it in the negative form, I'm going to say, don't close the door. Muni. Do you see here? Muni. Doen jou werk. Muni jou werk doen nie. Lees die boek. Muni die boek lees nie. But, maar, maak asjeblief die deur toe. If the word, if there's an extra word um, that emphasizes the order, then this is what it's going to be. Moet asjeblief nie die deur toe maak. Do you see, they still use the letter of the words there. Doen liever nou jou werk. Rather do your work now. Moet liever nie nou jou werk doen nie. Do you see this? You can't just leave words out in the negative form. You have to use it. Any questions? 
And yes, I'm going to ask it at the end of each slide because this is important work. Questions on this slide? Okay. Just before I go on to the next slide, guys, um, you must go and study these word, words. And I'll show you now in that other book that I, the, the, remember the one I said is the Bible in, in, when you learn Afrikaans. I'll show you that just now. Take a picture. Tell me when you're done. Then I can go on. Okay, so they are done. And this is what I want to, to refer to in the Bible. Now, I'm not going to read everything, but I want to focus on the following. Look here. Um, and I know the picture is a bit bad. Alles is niks nie. Almal is niemand nie. Do you see the words change? Enige, the word will change to geen. Enige iets of enigsins, geen sins. Moet, moet nie. Do you see? And we just did examples of that. Then the word errands becomes narrens when we want to make it negative. Please, please, please go and study that. That will make your life much better. Nog word nie meer. Ooit word nog. Iets nog niks. Amal niemand meer. Errands narrens. Iemand word niemand meer. Nog iets niks nie. Of, of, nog, nog. Sowel as, nog, nog. This is studying word. I cannot do anything more than tell you, go and study that. So if you don't have the, the book, this beautiful book here, then you can use this, um, this um, screenshots that I took um, to help you to learn, to learn that. So please, I'm going to put this um, chat box and everything here underneath. Take a picture. And if you've got the book, you're a very lucky child. I did actually look if there's a, a PDF uh, on the internet, but no free PDF on this. That's how important this book is, I think. Okay, are you all with me? I have two of them now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, it's great books, guys. Even for me now that I study, of that I teach a uh, first additional language, it's easy, if I read this book, it's easier for me to teach you guys. And do you hear my baby agreed with me just now? <laughs> okay. All right, guys, let's quickly um, exercise. Um, all right. So the first one, you must change this now for me to the negative form. Ek wil gaan en ma wil bly. I want to go and mom wants to stay. Change this to the negative form. Think carefully. Use your notes that you've taken pictures of. Try this. Try. Guys, there's nothing wrong if you try and you make a little mistake because now you can learn from that. Guys, are you with me? Okay. Pavel gaan in Marvel play. How can I change? Remember now what I said. Look here. There's going to be two knees. Where is it going to be? Pavel nie gaan nie in Marvel play. What is it going to be? Um, pa wil nie gaan en ma wil nie bly. Pa wil nie gaan en ma wil nie bly. Okay, you've got the idea, the answer. Pa wil nie gaan nie en ma wil nie bly nie. You see, this is going to have four nies because it's two sentences joined together by a Bostic word, a conjunction there. Okay, almost there. Next one. Ons kom vanavond keier en ons sal bel. We are coming to visit tonight and we will call. Try. Thank you, Cheryl and Tlanla, for trying, guys. 
Yes, Nsanda, indeed. Okay. Right. Are you going to try number two? Ons kom van aan keier en ons sal nie bel nie. Remember, now the, the knee after the verb. Ons kom nie van aan keie nie en ons sal nie bel nie, ok? Um, I think that you might be, ons kom nie van aan keie nie en ons sal nie bel nie. Very, very well done, Tlandla. Good, 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 good. Baie goed. Number three, hy sê dat hy daar sal wees. Hy sê dat hy daar sal wees. This might be one of those changes. Hy sê dat hy daar sal wees. Just try. I say that I do shall be yes. Make that into the negative form. Write that into the negative form. I say that I need daar sal wees nie. Okay, Cheryl, let's see if you're correct. I say, nie dat hy nie daar sal wees nie. Okay, so he's not saying that he's not going to be there. But I think you're actually more right there. Okay, hy was gezond, daarom het hy saterdag gespeel. Hy was gezond, daarom het hy saterdag gespeel. Almost the end, Lanla. Next one, number four. Hy was gezond, daarom het hy saterig gespeel. Daarom, pas die goed. Hy was gezond, daarom het hy nie saterdag gespeel nie. Ok, hy was nie gezond nie, daarom het hy nie saterdag gespeel nie. The city, I think you're almost there. Hy was nie gezond nie, daarom het hy nie saterdag gespeel nie. You actually had it right. Congratulations, just remember your comma after the knee. Oh, you did write the comma after, that's Cheryl. Ok, well done, well done. Number five, Stan, do it still. That's an easy one. Stan, do it still. Okay. Moenie doodstil staan nie, staan nie doodstil nie, almost there. I think actually um, te bochu might be correct, yes. Moenie doodstil staan nie, and he also used exclamation mark, and he remembered, remembered the word moenie. Yes. Good, 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 good. Next one. Doen asseblief die word wat ek gegeet. Remember the word asseblief nie. You must use all the words. Remember that example in the last slide. Doen asseblief die werk wat ek gegee het. Okay, te boog gesê, het moet asseblief nie die werk wat ek gegeet doen nie. Almost there, moet asseblief nie die werk doen 
wat ek gegeet nie. Look at the difference there in the word order um, te bogen. Moet asjeblief nie die werk doen wat ek gegeet nie. Almost there. Oké, okay, next one. Ek vertrou hom. Let's do this one and then we can stop the lesson for the day. Ek vertrou hom. Ek vertrou hom. Easy one. I trust him. Ek nie hom vertrou nie. Remember the, the use of the verb there. Ek nie hom vertrou nie. Ek hom nie vertrou nie. Remember where the nie comes in the verb. Ek vertrou hom nie. Do you see here? Only one nie. Because it starts with the pronoun. And then the verb. And then the um, subject. So if you've got a, um, a subject. A verb. Object. Then it's only going to get one nie. Okay. Ek vertrou hom nie, let's see you correct. Guys, thank you for trying. We'll finish this tomorrow and then we'll start our new lesson. Um, please pay attention to your health, guys. Eat healthy, sanitize, masks on. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for participating. You guys rock. Bye-bye.